So welcome everyone. So my name is Eric Harris and I'm going to give you a little background about me. I am a Chinese medicine practitioner and a holistic healer. I have used a lot of different modalities to heal myself from chronic uh, inflammation and disease. I had some back injuries and Lyme disease and things of that nature. And that's how I got into doing everything that I do. Um, and so the Chinese medicine is at the core of what I do. Uh, I do a lot of what an acupuncturist does, except I don't use needles. So I do acupressure, it's called Tui Na. And then I do things like cupping and gua sha and put ear seeds in and all sorts of fun stuff. Work with Chinese herbs and teas and teach Qigong and Tai Chi. And uh, work with uh, some other stuff too, like aromatherapy and crystals, sound healing, energy healing, and uh, all the things that I use with my clients and students are things that I use to heal myself. And so that's why I'm so passionate about sharing them with everyone. So, and uh, tonight we're all here to talk about seasonal allergies and uh, ways to treat them holistically. And uh, one other thing that I'm really into is foraging for wild plants and mushrooms. So Heather's been on a few of my walks. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, so yeah, and so a lot of what we have here is been wild foraged. So, and we're gonna talk a little bit about that and you know why it's so awesome to forage for plants and mushrooms. Um, so yeah, so we're going to start off talking about how allergies are viewed according to Chinese medicine. Has anyone had any experience with Chinese medicine? Anyone ever seen an acupuncturist? Or yes. Has anyone ever taken Chinese herbs before? Yeah? Okay. Cool. Um, so basically, what all of Chinese medicine in a nutshell is based off of is five elemental theory. Okay, there's also what's called the eight principles, but that's usually a little more complicated to explain. Um, so you have the five elements, so which is wood, fire, earth, metal, and water. Okay, and so we actually have organ systems that fit into all these elements. And so we have now entered into the time of spring, which is wood, and for liver and gallbladder. All right, and so it, it's why it's a great time to, to cleanse and detox our livers, especially mm -hmm. after long winters, you know, when we traditionally have more fatty foods and things to kind of sustain us through the cold weather. Um, and, and so, you know, as it pertains to seasonal allergies, a lot of times what happens is, especially if people have gotten a lot of colds or flus, you know, their immune system is deficient, all right? And what we look at in, as the immune system in Chinese medicine is our Wei Qi. And our Wei Qi is our protective barrier, okay? So it's almost like the bubble that we have around us that's protecting us from colds, flus, allergies, any virus, all right? And so when we have an immune system deficiency, it means our Wei Qi has been compromised, all right? And so it's basically, we don't have the protection to protect us from these things. And one other aspect, according to TCM, that is, our, is related to our protection is what's called our wind gate, all right? So I talk about these uh, concepts a lot, especially talking about winter health and stuff, but it really pertains to, to the spring, too, and allergies as well. Um, so the wind gate is at the back of our head. So the main acupoint is gallbladder 20. So it's right uh, underneath the occiput here. So if you go from below your ears and you come up to the base of your spine, that's where you'll find it, okay? And that literally translates to, in, in Chinese, it's feng fen, and it means the, the moat around the city, right? And so we wanna have that protective barrier, that moat around the castle, okay? And so when we get allergies, that means that the, because allergies are what is called external wind, all right? That means the wind has moved into our body, moved into our wind gate, because we didn't have our Wei Qi built up, our protective barrier, all right? And that's like that, I mean, we're talking about seasonal allergies, but that can be like that for any type of allergy, actually. And things that, uh, 
starting from birth, like people that have like, say like a peanut allergy or a shellfish allergy or, you know, some real serious allergies. A lot of times it it's, can be a congenital thing that we're born with not enough chi, not enough jing, not enough original chi, right? And so, and so at when we were a young age, our wei chi didn't protect our, you know, didn't build up and, and create that protection. Okay, so that's how we look at things in Chinese medicine, totally different than a Western medicine perspective. So, um, but it's, you know, it's been around for thousands of years and it's really worked a lot. It's helped me a lot. It's helped many people. So, uh, and it's great. I like to explain some of these concepts. I don't like to get too deep into it because it can be uh, pretty esoteric and uh, hard concepts to understand. Um, but, you know, one that a lot of people know is yin and yang right? And yin is cooling energy and yang is warm energy. You break it real simple with that, right? And they are interconnected within each other. And so they are always striving for balance, right? So you never want to have one greater than the other. That's why when you look at it, it's like they're, in, they're kind of eating each other, you know, the, the creation and, and death cycle of yin and yang, all right? And so we have these aspects of yin and yang in our bodies. And what happens is if one is what we say either excess or deficient, okay, this is where we want to tonify with herbs or open up energy through the meridians and help to bring balance, right? So, so the yin and yang are perfectly balanced. So often when we're talking about allergies, someone is probably going to have a lung chi deficiency, okay? So the, the, the strength in their lungs is not as strong. The chi is not as strong, right? Because And the wei chi resides in our lungs, all right? So that's why everything with the immune system is for lung and large intestine because those are paired organs, all right? And that uh, pertains to the metal element, which is in, in the fall. Um, but yeah, so just to kind of give you a little snippet of how we how we look at things and how if someone has allergies you know i'm probably going to ask them a bunch of questions and look at their tongue and check their pulse and see what it's telling me because everyone is different you know no allergies are are the same and uh, no person is the same so they're going to respond in a different way and that's why we have to you know modify their treatment according to what's going on with them so and sometimes you know i was talking about this i also started a podcast um, and our episode this week is about spring detoxing and seasonal allergies. So we were talking a lot about this um, just the other day. And, uh, you know, it's funny how like some people, it's like, well, I only get allergies in the spring, right? Or I'll get, I'll get clients that come to me, oh, I only get allergies in the fall. Or, you know, or some people will have really deep immune deficiencies, whether it be an autoimmune condition. Um, and like, no, I don't get allergies, you know? So it's like, it's such a... You know, there's no one thing that's going to work for everyone, right? Um, but that's that being said, I do try to formulate my tinctures and, uh, and tonic herbs that everyone can take, you know? So that's kind of how I've, I've come, come across it. Um, but there's also different times when you don't want to take certain things, and we're going to get into that. So um, does anybody have any questions at this point? Uh, so yeah, so another aspect that is important, especially pertaining to the immune system, is what is called our nei wei qi. So it's N-E-I-W-E-I qi, -E -E right? And that is the food we eat and the air that we breathe, okay? And so that's a very important factor as pertaining to our diet and, you know, what we're feeding our bodies and how it's going to affect where our immune system lies. For, so for instance, I always try to get people to not eat dairy, especially mm -hmm. if they have allergies, because dairy creates dampness in the body, and especially in the lungs. And that's why even if, if you get sick and you go to the doctor, and he, a lot of times they'll say, try to lay off dairy because it's gonna create more congestion in your sinuses and, and congestion in, in your lungs, right? So I personally have not eaten dairy in 10 years, and it's great for me. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so that's, you know, these things all play a part, okay, and how we're going to 
you know, keep our body strong and prevent us from getting allergens. And the, and the air we breathe, super important. So also meaning that we want to be careful with all the toxins in the environment. Um, even I like to say, like especially this time of year where people are spraying all these chemicals to, to kill all these things on their lawn. And even when you go into the store, like I had to go to Home Depot last week to get some stuff for the house and like, it's like, whew, I don't want to walk down certain aisles, you know, like I, I can get very sensitive to chemicals. I can get a headache. And even though I do all these things to protect myself, I put essential oils on, I, you know, but um, sometimes it's like they're so strong and, and I don't get it sometimes how people don't make the connection, like, and how powerful they are um, in a negative way. But um, so I always try to get people to, uh, use more natural things. Like I, if I have to kill a weed, mostly I try to eat my weeds, um, but if I have to kill uh, them, like say poison ivy or something like we were talking about before class, I get actually landscape strength vinegar, which is still pretty strong. I wear a mask, um, but it's 30% vinegar and I mix actually with essential oils. And then I put um, a little bit of soap sometimes and uh, I mix it together in a little sprayer and it works really good. And it doesn't have the damaging effects of, you know, something like Roundup or, you know, ortho weed killer or something like that. So, um, and you know, a big reason why, you know, it's, it's also a product of our society, why so many more people are getting allergens, right? Because we are a lot more disconnected from our food source and from, uh, just preparing a lot of things in our life, right? And so the more that we're having kind of processed foods, box foods, it can be harder for our body to digest. And again, it takes energy away from the strength of the immune system and puts more energy into, oh, I have to take time to break this down, right? So, and we mostly, most people are not eating wild food, right? And I, that's what I try to tell people uh, you know, that have allergies. Cause it's funny if I start getting, there was a time where I did get allergies. I actually, um, I used to live, I grew up in Connecticut and I moved away for a little while and, um, I had some things you know, happen with the Lyme disease and different stuff where my immune system was deficient. And when I came back, I got out of seasonal allergies for the first time. And I was like, I, I don't understand where this is coming from. I didn't never had allergies in my life, you know? Um, but getting into Chinese medicine and taking mushrooms and different things, you know, I was able to build my immune system back up and I don't get allergens anymore. But, you know, there's still times where sometimes, oh, I feel a little sniffly, you know? I feel like, uh, just like maybe some mucus, but nothing major, right? And then the first thing I do, cause it's always coming up in my yard is I go out and I eat some dandelion. I eat some garlic mustard that's popping up. Pretty soon the violets will be coming up, right? I pick the field garlic, right? And I start making stuff out of that. And I tell you, as soon as I start eating the wild food, I don't have those issues anymore, you know? So another thing I always like to recommend people, a little tidbit, is to use a neti pot if you haven't done that before or some some type of saline you know nasal cleansing system um, if you do get allergies just to clear the allergens out of your sinus cavities because that that really helps too so you guys seem to kind of know what that is right yeah okay good um and i even tell people too like it's okay to wear a mask too outside like if you're doing yard work and blowing leaves like you know i wear i wear a mask and it makes a big difference so so these are just some some little tricks that uh, I don't know. I, I know it sounds simple, but sometimes I get surprised how some people don't know these things. So, you know, <laughs> um, so, yeah, so eat your weeds. Super important. As long as there are no herbicides and things like that and not by the roadside, things of that nature. I do lead people on forage walks. So we delve more into that stuff. I got one coming up actually on uh, May 5th. So. I actually have a schedule here if you guys want to check that out later, some of my other classes. But um, but yeah, so if you haven't been into wild food, I, I highly recommend it. It's pretty awesome. It's fun to find things in your backyard that you can eat and make as medicine. So and you guys are going to be experiencing some of that today. So, um, so yeah, what else do I have here? Oh, yeah. So, so I brought some of my kit. As I said, I do 
a lot of different things, but um, one thing I wanted to share that I do that's, that's really awesome in the treatment of allergies is I brought my little ear kit, okay? So this is called auriculotherapy, all right? So what I do is I take this hemostat and I put the little, this is vicariousine, so you can use three different things, actually four different things. So I use silver, gold, or vicariousine, all right? And what, what happens is your ear represents your whole body. So there are over 300 acupoints in your ear, all right? So what I do is I make a little indent, okay? So right here is actually the points for the head. So if someone's got a headache or sinus congestion, all right, I put a bunch of points there. I'll, a lot of times I'll put silver because silver is draining. So it's gonna pull away uh, inflammation and stuff like that. So I would put some silver points right, right on the ear, okay? Right, right at the area of the head. There's also a point for the sinus. We could put that in there too. And then often I will put some gold because gold is nourishing, okay? And I will put that on the lung, on the large intestine, right? So some of those areas that need some boosting. Um, I may put some silver on the liver and the gallbladder to help drain, help to detox. And then there's this awesome point called the wind stream point. So it's kind of like what I was talking about with the wind gate at the back of your head. You also have a point on your ear too that is, is really awesome at helping to protect you from, from allergens. So it's called auriculotherapy. You guys ever heard of that? Mm -hmm. No? So a lot of times acupuncturists will put needles in the ear, but you can't walk around with needles in your ear, right? That wouldn't really work. But you can walk around with seeds in your ear. I do it all the time. <laughs> and what's great about it is that you see they're on a little Band-Aid, okay? And so they, they stay on for four to seven days. And I tell my clients, I want you to press them a few times a day, especially if you're feeling congestion or whatever symptom that you're experiencing, you reach up and press them. We do that in all my Qigong classes. We do that at all the end too. We open up, that's part of it. So I tell people, no matter, even if you don't know what it is, just, just reach up to your ear and press and pinch and give them a nice tug every day. So that's one thing I wanted to show you. And then I also have this fun tool. This is called a gua sha tool, okay? Now gua sha means scraping in Chinese. And so what you do is you take a little bit of oil, okay? I don't really have any here, but... Um, and it's really effective, especially up in the neck, okay? Opening up the, the lymph nodes, helping to drain the lymph, all right? You can even do it, if someone's got sinus congestion, you can do it right up here, okay? You can do it all along the head. So the way it works is you put the oil, and then you do that scraping motion. And what it does is it brings blood to the surface, right? It helps to move chi, helps to wake up your body's ability to actually heal itself. And a lot of times, see, it's starting to get red, right? Mm -hmm. It could even get purple, okay? But so I do that in different areas and you do it for, you know, five, 10 minutes or so and then you move it around. I like, I really like doing it on the neck and I even, a lot of times I, I have my clients get a, a stone from me and, and do it themselves, especially if they have a lot of issues with headaches, sinus congestion, and I teach them how to do it. I say, you can do any oil. You can even go into the kitchen, get olive oil, and put that on, right? So it's a real simple way that you can open up, help open up that wind gate back here. So, but especially, you know, a lot of times with sinuses, they feel really stuffed, right? And you want to break them up. And it's nice to have a tool to do so, you know? They even have these little uh, jade rollers, I see. And you take this little roller and it's pretty cool. All right. So you guys ever heard of that? No? All new? Okay, cool. So another thing I do for people helping to boost their immune system is I also do, you know, fire cupping. A lot of people have heard of that now, right? So that's very similar to what gua sha does, okay? Except you can actually get deeper into the body. So you can, I do traditional fire cupping, 
And so you take one of these hemostats and you have a cotton swab that's doused in alcohol. All right, and my clients lay usually face down with a gown on with their back exposed. And you light that cotton swab on fire and you go like this, put it right on the skin. And the heat creates the suction, okay? Right. And it draws out inflammation, helps to pull out toxins, and it boosts the immune system. And again, that can get very red or purple too, depending on how strong that you do it. Um, but that's, it's incredible for boosting the immune system. So a lot of people that come to me, especially around this time, I'm like, all right, well, it's time to do cupping, you know, um, because we really need to boost it back up, especially after a long winter. So, so these are some, some tools. Uh, you know, I like to teach people how to do the cups themselves too, because it's something that anybody can do. You know, you can do it for the family. I taught my wife how to do it, and she does it on me. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> um, but yeah. So these are these are some tools that I wanted to share. Is there any other questions at this time? No. Do you take insurance? I don't take insurance. No. No. I do offer you know things on a sliding scale though if people you know can't afford, and I do offer different variations of my services too. So sometimes people come, they just want to get ear points in. They can get ear points in, you know. So I kind of like to break it down. So. Um. So yeah, so now we're going to talk about some herbs. I think we'll go talking into about these Chinese herbal formulas first before we get into the ones that we're going to make. So I work with a couple companies. Today I brought uh, these formulas from Khan Herbals, all right? And this is a Chinese herb company out in California. I work with this other company called Sun Ten, where I can get um, powdered Chinese herbal formulas and even custom formulas for clients too. So, which custom formulas are really good for people with cancer or real like serious conditions or very strong loading doses, um, very powerful. Um, but the, a lot of times people don't like the, the powders or the decoctions as much um, because it takes a little bit more time. You have to make tea out of it. Um, but I try to promote that too because it's part of meditation and you know taking the time for yourself. But a lot, of, a lot of times people feel most comfortable taking the pills and that's fine. It's something easy that they can do, either two pills two times a day or two pills three times a day, something like that. So um, I think maybe also a product of our society. People are used to taking pills. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so I brought a few formulas that I use for allergies. This one formula um, right here is called Jade Windscreen. Okay. And this is going to build up that Wei Qi, build up that protection. So the number one chief herb, so the way formulas work is there's always, just like kind of like a supplement, right? The first formula, first herb listed on the formula is the greatest concentration, right? But the way that they break it down is it's the chief herb is like the primary function of what the formula is for, okay? Then you have what's called the deputies, and the deputies kind of help to support that chief herbs function, right? And then there's the assistants, and the assistants help to make sure that there's no like contraindications with some of those herbs, right? So they can all harmonize together. Um, and that's why people say, oh, Chinese herbs are toxic, right? Well, yeah, there are some toxic Chinese herbs, especially if you take them on their own. Like aconite is a, can be a really toxic herb. Um, and you can get aconite poisoning is really serious, but I pretty much guarantee you if you take aconite in a Chinese herb and you take it how you're supposed to, it's not going to happen because the herbs are working together in harmony in a formula, just like how herbs work together in nature in harmony, right? So, um, and then the last, last little, uh, bit that's always in a formula is called the harmonizer, right? So the harmonizer kind of helps to, to bring it all together, right? So make them kind of work in harmony, all right? So they all have kind of a different uh, purpose. So the jade windscreen, I tell people to start taking, usually, like if they have seasonal allergies, I tell them to start taking them in March um, or to start taking them like in August or something like that, right? So Because you want to start to build it up and before the allergies start to affect you. 
and uh, but it's got it's got some really good herbs, some similar herbs to some of the other formulas. Um, some that help to clear wind, like silar root. Some to help tonify the spleen, which is uh, really important because there's lung chi deficiency and also spleen chi deficiency is very common. Um, this also has Chinese Chinese cinnamon twig. And cinnamon twig is is different than cinnamon bark. Uh, it, it actually helps to open things up to the extremities, where cinnamon bark helps to bring things to the core. Like so, it helps to bring heat to the core. That's why we use that in a lot in the winter, right? But cinnamon twig brings brings things away from the core, actually. So, so that's called jade windscreen, or yuping fen song. And then we have uh, fragrant jade. This is the number one formula that I give to people for allergies and it works incredibly. Um, it even will work for people that have um, allergens to like cats and dogs or mold, things like that. Yeah, I have a client that's been taking it all through the winter and it's really helped her. So, um, but it's usually used for, for like seasonal allergies. Again, it's got astragalus root as that chief herb, but then it also, it has a silar root, but then it also has magnolia flower, fragrant angelica root, uh, Chinese mint herb, right? These are all very aromatic and helping to clear the sinuses and drain, right? Because a lot of times when we get the allergens, you know, affecting us, it's what's seen as inflammation, right? And so we need to clear that inflammation out. And uh, the best way to do that is to use some cooling herbs, some aromatic herbs, kind of open things up. So Chinese mint herb is the, like the number one herb to clear from the eyes. So, so people with itchy eyes and things like that, it's really good. Um, so that's, that's a really good formula for that. And so then, so say the people didn't get a chance to do the preventative, right? And then maybe they didn't get a chance to do the initial treatment and then it went a little further and they have a sinus infection. Then I would do subdue headwind, okay? So subdue headwind is even stronger. The chief herb is Chinese mint herb. It also has schizonepida, Sichuan lavage, which is draining for inflammation. That fragrant angelica, again, no top geringium root. That's again, uh, very anti-inflammatory. Um, even has some green tea leaf in it and chrysanthemum flower. Chrysanthemum flower is usually paired with, with mint actually too. And it makes a great tea in the summertime. So very cooling to help, to help draining heat. And so that's what you want. A sinus infection is, it, that means it's gonna be, there's gonna be a lot of heat going on. So the tongue's probably gonna be red, could possibly have um, a yellowish coat to it too, which would mean damp heat with the infection. That's what we call in Chinese medicine, infection is damp heat, okay? So that's when I would give uh, this formula to people. And it's usually, so if it's something been around for a long time, like weeks, like in their, you know, there's, it's gone into that infection stage, doesn't just happen overnight. So, um, so those are a few formulas that I would recommend. Um, I would also maybe give them a tincture, like we're going to get into. So, um, so just to show you what it, what it looks like. Do you guys know what a tincture is? I know we're here to make one, but yeah, you know what it is? Okay. Um. So, and traditionally tinctures are made with alcohol, okay? I like to use a, a gluten-free potato vodka, um, but you can use really any alcohol. Um, I'm just like strict gluten-free, so, and I found this one and it seemed to make some good tinctures and was agreeable for people. So, I also like to use glycerin. So almost all of my tinctures are made with vegetable glycerin just because the alcohol didn't really agree with me. It used to kind of give me headaches and I didn't like it. So, but traditionally in Chinese medicine in particular, they use alcohol tinctures. Um, the benefit of an alcohol tincture is it'll last forever. Yeah. It will never go bad. Um, and they say that it goes straight to your liver, which means then it's going to be dispersed rapid, you know, rapidly through your body, right? So, uh, so, you know, there's some benefits to that. And some people, if it's perfectly agreeable with them, that's what they use and that's fine. You can also use vinegar to make a tincture mm -hmm. and also make something that's called an oxymel, which is doing vinegar and honey. And, be, and the honey, because honey is a natural preservative, it will never go bad. So that allows the, uh, the 
tincture to be shelf stable because the vinegar tinctures they don't they won't last long um, if they're not refrigerated so and it's like the least amount too of like what you can pull out from the medicine like alcohol is like number one also of like how much medicine is going to be pulled out from from the plant or the mushroom and uh, and I can I know that too because when I make I make custom formulas for people too and some I have this um, friend that's in acupuncture school and so she wanted some some mushroom tinctures of alcohol and so I've made I've made a lot of them and it's amazing to see uh, how much more does get pulled out with the alcohol than the glycerin um, but I try to repurpose it and a lot of times I'll, I'll um, well, actually, with all the tinctures uh, with mushrooms, you want to double extract them. So you want to uh, make a decoction out of them after you have uh, formulated the tincture. So how it works is we're going to have our ball jar. Okay, might as well get into this because we're going to get into it. So, um, and you put the the herbs and the solvent, either the alcohol or the glycerin, in the ball jar. All right, and you know we're going to try to keep it so the ingredients are below the the water level the glycerin level um so it doesn't get moldy and so we're going to talk about some things that you can do to kind of keep it keep it down um but so you you let that sit in a cool dark place preferably not in the sun uh and you do it for about at a minimum four to six weeks is how long you want to keep the tincture there and you want to shake it up as much as you can all right, so that's that's basically how you make a tincture, um, and then you want to strain the uh, ingredients out, and then with the mushrooms, and sometimes I even do it with with the herbs too. I boil them up, and because with with the mushrooms you want to do a double extraction because there's a certain amount certain medicine that comes out when you're doing the tincture making process, and then there's other certain amount of medicine that comes out when you bring it to a boil. So it's the polysaccharides are what come out in the water, and the beta glucans are what come out with the tincture. And it's and it's really important to have both those aspects of, of the medicine from the mushroom. So and so a lot of times what I do after I even make that, I'll boil it up again and I'll and I'll make tea. I'll drink it as tea. So I make sure that I don't waste anything. So but so that's that's basically in a nutshell how we make a tincture. And you want to take it as a tonic. You do about one dropper full, two to three times a day. And I put it in water. You can just dump it right under your tongue too, but I, I prefer to put it in like four ounces of water. And if that's, that's pretty much how it works. And that's how you're doing it as a tonic, right? But say you got sick or say you, you, know, you had an allergy you know symptoms come over you you want to take like two or three times more the dose because you can't like overdose on it so that's the wonderful thing about most herbs you can't really o overdose um, especially if there's no contraindications um, like raising your blood pressure or thinning your blood too much uh, so so that's just you know I, with my immunity tonic i always say oh if you get sick like in the winter you take it every couple hours you know as much as as much as you can and then it's going to really work in your system and make you to feel better. You do the same thing with my allergy tonic is what I tell people that uh, you want to, if you really have a lot of symptoms, then take, you know, a, a lot more. So. Right. so, yeah, I've never used this kind before, but we'll see how it goes. I've had this one company where I've been buying glycerin and Heather was getting it too, but... I guess they're not getting it anymore, so that's the way of the world. But um, so I found I found this other company that uh, I ask a lot of questions to because I don't want there to be any soy or corn or anything like that. So this is uh, a blend of coconut and palm derived. 